Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome to another installment of Westmore Central's College Admissions Interview Series. My name is Shannon Donnelly and I am one of the counselors here at Westmore Central. And joining us today is Anastasia Hagerstrom from Boston University. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I actually brought a prop which not really, it's my Duncan. So for those of you who don't know, I did my um, graduate school in Boston at BU. And if it did one thing for me, besides provide a phenomenal education, it turned me into Team Duncan. So I do have this as my comfort coffee by my side <laughs> throughout this. So um, Anastasia, let's just start with you telling us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about BU. Sure. Uh, that sounds great. So as you mentioned, my name is Anastasia. I am one of the associate directors serving on the board of admissions at Boston University. Um, I don't typically travel New Jersey. We don't have a permanent New Jersey rep at the current moment. Um, we plan to have that all set in the next couple of months. Um, but in the interim, I'm sort of serving as your point person. So I'm happy to speak with you, any students that are interested, you can direct everything right to me. Um, I have been at BU just for a short period of time. I started in January, but I have worked in higher ed and admissions for nine years. So in great hands, I promise. Um, <laughs> and Boston University, you know, really a wonderful and spectacular um, institution. We're a large private teaching and research institution. We have about 17,000 undergraduate students at BU, so a really large student population. Um, those students come from all 50 states, our US territories, and we have just about 100 um, countries represented on campus. So we have about a 24% international student population, so really diverse from where we're all coming from. Um, academically, we have over 300 programs of study. So again, a real plethora of um, programs that you could study here at BU. There's a lot of flexibility in your studies. And we have 10 schools and colleges that the um, programs are sort of divided between. Uh, we're an urban campus located, of course, in the great city of Boston. There is a Dunkin' Donuts probably at every every corner. <laughs> um, I am true. Yep. <laughs> um, and we are just about 500 feet, the start of our campus is about 500 feet from Fenway. So Fenway Park, if, if you know the area, um, mm -hmm. it's a great sort of starting point. And our campus runs about a mile and a quarter along Commonwealth Avenue right up from Fenway Park. So it is still a pretty enclosed campus, even though it is in the city, um, you do very much feel like you are on a campus environment. Definitely. I can vouch for that aspect as well. Um, what I think this is actually nice because you have had experience at other colleges and universities. So what's one of your favorite things about BU's campus or the school itself? I think from my perspective, it's really the opportunities that students have available to them. I feel like I say this a lot to students is that nobody at BU is ever going to tell you no, right? That there's never, that's never the first answer. It's not like, no, you can't do that or no, we can't make that possible. It's really just like how, how can we creatively figure out to make that work, whether it's double majoring or dual degree programs or studying abroad, you know, internships, whatever it is, um, you're not you're not ever chasing an opportunity. They very much exist. Whereas, you know, other institutions that I've worked at, whether it's size or, you know, different restrictions, you don't necessarily have those same opportunities. So I think research as well, right? That's something that as undergraduate students, you typically don't have the opportunity to participate mm -hmm. and engage in. At BU, that's not the case. You know, undergraduate students can take advantage of our undergraduate research opportunities program. So it's just, there's countless, countless things. And if you have the wherewithal to go after them, um, you can really make an amazing college experience for yourself. Absolutely, very good, thank you. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the campus culture, sports, clubs, Greek life, that sort of thing? Yeah, I think I always like to start by saying again, just based on where we are pulling students from, we are a very, very diverse uh, mm -hmm. campus community. So there is, there is something for everyone, you know, whether it's you're going to meet somebody from your area of you know, the US or you're going to experience some sort of cultural like differences and connect with people who are maybe from another country. Um, and then just in general, there is this energy that exists, I think, underneath the surface. Our students are really motivated, both academically, 
but also socially they want to be engaged and they are excited to take advantage again of all of the things that BU has. So we're probably most well known for our hockey team. Um, BU has won five national championships, not bragging. Um, <laughs> 34, I think we are now at for bean pots, which again, not bragging. Um, there is this, you know, school spirit that exists, I think, in the athletic realm. Um, we have 24 Division One athletic teams. And then, yes, we do have Greek life. We have cultural clubs. We have more professional organizations. We have over 450 clubs and organizations for students. Amazing. Yeah. So the list is is really very, very long, you know, and I took a look through myself and there is one, there's a cheese lover society. So, I mean, you can eat cheese in Boston. So there are so many things that you can bond <laughs> over. Yeah. There's probably a Duncan lovers club. And, and if there wasn't, I should have started it probably. <laughs> very good. But yeah, I, I definitely get that undertone there as well, for sure. Um, how about traditions? Are there any funky or fun traditions that you've picked up on or noticed since yes. you've been there? Oh, absolutely. The one I think that's most talked about that students love and are super excited for is lobster night. So we do that. Uh, yeah, I know. We do that at the fall, the beginning of the fall. Um, we host literally a lobster night on campus where you can go to any of the dining halls and get yourself a lobster, you know, bib included, and oh, okay. really have a feast. <laughs> Add the ambiance. That's so fun. I love that. Very so, new yeah. England. Um, <laughs> there's that's also a... a um, superstition that exists on campus. There's a seal in one of our um, courtyards where they tell you not to step on the seal. If you do, it's supposedly going to delay your graduation. I don't I don't buy into that, but there is just again that theory, don't step on the seal. And then at graduation, there's always a very long line for students to take a picture on the seal and sort of you know, commemorate their lasting moment at BU. So oh, I love that. That's so cute. <laughs> um, all right, switching gears a little bit to some of that academic side. What are some of the most popular or top majors at Boston University? So like if I'm going to major in blank, I should definitely consider BU. Yeah, I mean, I think we get the most applications for our engineering, our College of Engineering and our Questrom School of Business. So anything within our engineering programs or anything in our, our business programs are really popular, um, probably our two most notable schools and colleges on campus. But we also, I, I mean, it's hard to say because there are just so many, again, programs that BU offers and the educational experience at BU is just so so incredible. I can't really understate it enough. So I don't think it matters the major that you study here. You're going to get a really phenomenal education at Boston University. Cool. Any special programs, like accelerated programs that students should take note of? Yeah. So we do have a few accelerated programs. Um, we The one that we were probably most known for was our seven-year accelerated um, BSMD program. We did away with that program. So if there are students that might be interested, we discontinued it just this past summer. Okay. Um, that being said, there is another path for an early assurance program into our medical school. So if there are students that are interested, it's not accelerated, but it is an early assurance. So okay. yeah. we always talk you know, more about that. Um, we do have a new uh, computing and data science major at BU. So that's brand new this year. And we have a new building that we are putting up. Um, the building is crazy looking. It's sort of like this little like Jenga stack building. Um, very, you know, 21st century, I guess. Mm -hmm. Below the building, we have sunk 31 geothermal wells, which is what is going to be used to heat and cool the building. Um, it is our most sustainable building on campus. So it's pretty incredible just the design feat that it is, but not to mention that it is really designed in this way to encourage interdisciplinary study. The major itself is very much focused on interdisciplinary study. Um, data science really is relevant to many, many of our programs that we offer. So they've built it in a way that helps students to sort of double major in a more easy and fluid way. Um, so that I think is a really exciting and sort of cutting edge program that is developed now. Perfect, I love that. And would you say there's a lot of students melding and meshing different majors or kind of coming up with their own thing? Yeah, I think there are students who always ask about the flexibility, the level of flexibility, mm -hmm. because 
at 17, they have a million different interests and that's great. Um, and some know like, I wanna apply into this major, but I have these other interest areas. Um, changing your major is very easy. You know, you can, it's literally just a paperwork kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Double majoring is within the same school and college. So if there are two majors in the same school and college that you wanna study, Again, that's pretty seamless. It gets a little trickier when you're doing a dual degree, meaning that you're taking a major in one school and a major in another school or college. That gets a little trickier, but again, it's all very doable. Students add minors, subtract minors, add majors, subtract majors. So we see the whole gamut. Um, and sometimes things that are seemingly unrelated. So there is a high level of flexibility for students to sort of meld and mold their own majors. We, they could also create their own major as well. We sort of have a interdisciplinary major that's very, very cool. Fun. Very cool. I love that. I know even at my age now, sometimes it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is that you want to do next, right? I mean, I love my job. I'm staying in my job to my boss. Um, but especially coming in when you haven't had exposure to so many different things and especially this cohort of students who missed out on a lot of a traditional high school experience so that's so nice knowing that there is that flexibility once they get onto campus it's so perfect yeah. and 30 percent of our students will come in undecided so that's a really big that's, that's a second that's major. Yeah. yeah so awesome. you don't have to know if you don't good Perfect. I love that. Um, what's the type of student that you're typically accepting? Like, what do their test scores look like, GPA, rank, et cetera? Yeah, so this is always a tough one to answer, but um, I, I always go by the numbers and then I sort of pull it back to say there are quantitative pieces of the application, of course, but then there's also the, you know, the qualitative things, the things that exist outside of that. So, um, this past year, our incoming class, the average GPA ranged between a 3.8 and a 4.0. Okay. Um, that was for like the mid 50% of our class. Yeah. We are test optional for seniors again this year. Mm -hmm. um, for any juniors that might be interested in BU, we, we kind of reassess every year. So we anticipate knowing in the springtime okay. whether or not we'll be test optional for next application cycle. Um, okay. But the mid 50% ranges again for students um, for test scores. This last incoming class was a 1450 to a 1540 for the SAT and a 33 to a 35 for the ACT. Okay. And it's always numbers that I have a hard time conveying to families and students because th those are scores for students that have submitted the SAT or the ACT. Mm -hmm. So it's so hard because those averages, I think, can sometimes be skewed. So there are students that are admitted that are below that that average range. There are, you know, students that might have a perfect 1600. Great. But it's it's really more about the entirety of the application, not just these quantitative pieces. So we really look and I think I, I have alluded to it in some of the other answers, but we're looking for students who are enthusiastic learners, right? They are really motivated academically. They want to pursue the opportunities that exist in front of them, whether that is research, study abroad experiences. Um, our students are really global learners. So they, you know, they're change agents. They want to go out into the world. They want to make a difference. They want to impact um, other people, no matter what their industry is. Um, so I think like those are some of the, the big things that we look for. And we obviously know, you know, high school students might not have the same opportunities for research or for, for some of these things. So it's not to say that if you don't have them, that you're not admissible, but the importance of the things that students are doing at you know high school or in their, their communities, whether it's service or church related activities, or, you know, there's, there's such a gamut. Um, we're looking at all of those and, and even, you know, initiatives, um, COVID really impact impacted a lot of students and their ability to engage in certain things. So were they creative in ways that they could engage in their community or their schools or all of these things? So working, right? If you have a job, that's important. If you're taking care of family members, like all of these things, we, we just need to know them. So I always insist, brag about yourselves during the application process because now's the time to do it. Um, if it's not there, we won't know. Exactly. And I love that you said that because I'm always telling students it's not just about the numbers. Yeah. There's so much more that goes into your application. So, you know, you've talked a lot about the extracurricular. So if I have a student applying on the Common App, how important is that activity section? Is that huge for you guys? Yeah, it's really important. And it tends to be the area I think that students 
glaze over because it's very tedious to sit there to think like how many hours per week, how many weeks or how many weeks in the year, how many hours per day, right? Like to go through each of that in such a um, fine tooth way. But at least I can speak for myself at BU, we really are are taking that and putting it together almost like a puzzle. So we know you're in school from, you know, this time to this time, roughly, you know, this many weeks out of the year. So what are you doing in your summers? What are you doing with the extra time that you have when you're out of high school? So it provides sort of this context. And and I almost think of it as like, yeah, all these little puzzle pieces just start to like get into place Mm -hmm. and it starts, starts to form a picture of the student. So please, yeah, take your time with the activity section, list them, also in in order of priority you know what is the most important and significant activity to you that should be number one because that's the thing i'm going to also really hone in on Mm -hmm. to say this is impactful to them this is important and again how does that relate to our community and how does that fit our community absolutely and how about the essay how much do you take the essay into consideration i love the essay right it's my it's my favorite part because it it's the one area where you can really get to hear a student's voice i think there is there's a couple of pitfalls to the essay right students spend a lot of time potentially talking about an impactful person. This is the, the example I use all the time. Mm-hmm. They talk about a grandparent and maybe their grandparent has an amazing inspirational story and they write all about their grandparent. And at the end of the essay, I want to admit the grandparent, <laughs> and the student, yeah. right? So yeah. I always say, just be sure, mm-hmm. like, it is great to write about that. Don't get me wrong. And I don't want to, you know, dissuade anyone from writing about that. But how does it how does it relate to you? How has it impacted your life? How has it made you maybe make different decisions or participate in things differently or you know, whatever it is? Just tie it back to you, the applicant, because otherwise I might be looking for your your grandparent and asking them if they want to come to be you. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice. And then also, you know, remembering that the writing quality is just as important as the content. Students spend a lot of time focused on like, what should I write about? There's so, there's this like stress and pressure and anxiety of having to write this like most incredible essay and like creative. And sometimes like just a very well-written essay can be the thing that makes you stand out. So writing quality is equally as important when we're talking about the essay. Yes. Yeah, we always say to read it out loud to yourself and to walk away and come back to it at a different time because it's so hard when you look at it for so long. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely great advice. Thank you. Um, And what else? Is there anything else a student can do to make themselves a real standout in the admissions process for BU? Um, I think this is another thing that gets lost often is just being authentic to yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of students think that there is a secret formula (laughs) to maybe getting in. Um, And it's really not about that. It's about being true to who you are, doing activities and being involved in things that really bring you joy or that are, you know, something that you're committed and passionate about instead of just doing something to check off a box. And I think that that comes through when you're reviewing applications and you're reading essays and you're sort of like piecing it together. You can tell that there are certain things that maybe don't fit the student and you're like, oh, what what was that about, right? So being authentic, being true, um, and just really putting your best foot forward and also understanding that there is a college out there for everybody. And you know, just as much as we are trying to find the right fit, you all are trying to find the right fit, right? And it, you will find it, <laughs> I promise. Agreed, Agreed. absolutely. Um, to come back to something you mentioned a little bit earlier, mm-hmm. the test optional policies. Um, Can you talk a little bit more about the test optional aspect? Are you truly test optional is the question I get a lot. And does that factor into scholarship consideration? Mm -hmm. Yes. You can run with that. Yes. (laughs) No, test scores are not considered in any of the scholarship, the two merit scholarships that we have. And we can talk about aid maybe in a second, um, just because we are a little bit different, I would say, than some other institutions. But um, so test scores do not get weighed into that equation. And the best, I, I figured out a good analogy for students and families that I think will help. Um, I think of the application as a pizza. A whole, okay. I want to eat the entire pizza. I love pizza. It's delicious. The first thing that I'm looking for in an application is, does it have all the toppings that I ordered, right? Like, does it have all the required elements that we're looking for? Great. 
if let's say the test scores are not a part of your application, it's not that a slice of that pizza is all of a sudden missing. It's just that every other slice gets a little bit bigger. So it's okay. just that those components maybe are looked at a little bit more than they would be if you had test scores. It's just another evaluative piece. But without them, it doesn't mean that your application has a hole in it and that it's missing something. Um, and I think that that's what people get stressed out about or hung up on is that mm -hmm. you see that a student elected not to submit test scores and that all of a sudden there's sort of like this black mark on their application. It's not viewed that way. I literally just go, OK, and I move on to the next component okay. and I look at activities, you know, so that's how I put it. Hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> no, I love that. That's so perfect. And I'm going to steal that analogy from you and start using it because it, it has to be one of the most popular questions I get asked mm -hmm. every year. Definitely. And then I guess to go back to the aid piece, um, you know, we talk a lot about sticker price versus actual price and you know, can you talk, I guess, a little bit about the tuition and what a typical financial aid package looks like for BU? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So the total cost of tuition, room and board fees, all in, nothing applied, is just about $83,000 a year, which I know is a very big sticker price. And, and everyone's reaction is that. I usually get the, like, <laughs> jaw hitting the table. Yeah. The average financial aid package for a BU student that obviously is filing for aid is about 58,000 a year. So that, again, that's yeah. average. Yeah. All based on finance, like financial circumstances, of mm -hmm. course. But BU has also moved in a direction where we are now able and have committed to meeting 100% of demonstrated need for our first time full-time students, which we've never done in the past. Like the, this has been new for the past maybe three years or so. Mm -hmm. um, that makes my job a lot easier, I think, um, because it does take that affordability piece potentially out of the equation for some families. Mm -hmm. That also just as a as a precursor to that, the demonstrated need, how we get to that is the total cost of attendance minus a family's EFC. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the, the rub is that the EFC, families don't necessarily think it's yeah. representative, right? So I, so I always put that out there of like, mm -hmm. it, it may make it seem more affordable. For other families, it might not still. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a really great tool on our website called My Intuition. It's sort of a calculator outside of the uh, net price calculators. The net price calculators usually take about a half hour to sort of really fill out in its entirety. The My Intuition tool, it's six questions. So it's a lot quicker. It's very BU specific, it loads all of our cost of attendance information, and it gives you a really good idea of approximately what your aid would look like, how much you would be responsible for. And again, as long as you're answering those with good information, you'll get sort of good information back. So that's a tool I always point families to, especially deciding whether or not you want to apply early decision or regular decision. You know, I know financial is, is one of those considerations. So that might be a really good tool and resource. We do also have two merit-based scholarships, but we only only 8% of our students will qualify for a merit scholarship. So it's a very competitive slice, whereas like 92% of our students will qualify for need-based aid. So, you know, there's a difference there. Um, the merit scholarships, the trustee scholarship, there is a separate essay that students have to complete as part of the, part of the Common App. And the presidential scholarship, there's nothing additional that they need to submit. But for both scholarships to be considered, you have to submit your applications by December 1st. Okay. Even if you're applying regular decision, which is a later deadline, if you want to be considered for the um, scholarships, just December 1st should be your in your sights. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. And let's say I were to receive an acceptance letter back from BU, does yeah. the financial package come with that or is that separate later? It comes separate, but it will come pretty soon after because yeah. our financial aid deadlines are the same as our application deadlines. Perfect. So if you're going to apply early decision, November 1st for your financial documents and your admissions documents. And then, like I said, there's some processing that has to happen. Mm -hmm. So there might be a couple of weeks, but it will follow pretty quickly thereafter. Perfect. Very good. Um, another question in another direction a little bit. Sure. Uh, we are an international baccalaureate school. Um, so we have both IB diploma and IB career related programs. So can you talk a little bit about how the IB affects a student's candidacy for admission? Do you look at that favorably? Does one look different than the other versus just taking IB courses? 
Yeah. So IB diploma students, you know, usually they are in the most rigorous and demanding curriculum. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we look at applications, we look at a student's overall GPA on an unweighted scale. And then that automatically makes students really anxious because they're like, but I took all of the AP classes. And it's like, we, we know. And what we then do sort of alongside that is we, we look at every student's curriculum within the context of their high school. As we know, high schools are not created equally. I would love it if they all were. I would love for everyone to be standardized. Not the case. So we really want to make sure that we're weighing and measuring a student against the offerings at their high school. So again, if you have the IB diploma program and that is, you know, sort of the most rigorous probably curriculum you could be in, mm -hmm. if you're in that, great. And we'll look at that from that standpoint. If you've taken some IB courses, that that's nothing to, you know, sneeze at. That's great. Um, it might not be as demanding, but it's still demanding, right? And it sort of like ranks down from there. Right. Um, we, we view it almost like on a sliding scale of like how demanding and then what what did you take advantage of? Perfect. So it would not be fair to say that an IB student would have advantage over other students right. just based off of that. It's right, really because like, it's all within their context. Within context. Like if another student doesn't have the IB curriculum available to them, they won't be disadvantaged. Gotcha. Yeah. Perfect. Good. You finished so helpful so far. I have one last question for you. And that is, if you could just offer one piece of advice to a student who is either in the middle of their college applications or a student who's just starting their search process, what would your advice be? Yeah. Oh, man, that's so hard. And I feel like it was almost sprinkled in throughout this. It was. I think. <laughs> um, but I think the two things that I would say is, you know, be authentic again to yourself be who you are, put your best foot forward, and just understand that this process is the same as like interviewing for a job. You know, there, there are, we're looking for, for students who are gonna be the right fit. You might find through your exploration that we might not be the right fit. And do build a college search list that is a list that you love, not a reach safety. I don't even know if they do that anymore. They did that when I was a student and I really disliked that like ranking order. Mm -hmm. Just build a list of schools that you love that are good fits across the board, whether academically, uh, location, opportunities, whatever it is, versus sort of having this idea of like a ranking system of this is a safety, this is a this, you know, they're all good fits for some reason. So just have that, that list. And again, remember that this process should be fun um you know you're all gonna find the college that is right for you perfect thank you so much you're i think welcome. you know i try to drive that home but when it's coming from the mouth of an admissions counselor oh. it's so much more meaningful i think so i, hope so. <laughs> I, hope I really so. really appreciate all of your time um and i am sure we will have plenty of students on campus very soon and submitting their applications very soon um so if there are any questions i will be sure to reach out to you um, but again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you.